let's switch gears for a bit, and、okay. I want to talk to you about your decision. Cause just for everyone else who's like who's Veronica, because the last time we talked, it wasn't on vid- video. All、um, right. Um, you were you're the going for it girl. Veronica, right. Veronica is the going for it girl. She has been living off her art for. When did you、a、decide? Year. A year. Yeah, a year.、Um, okay. I my job started falling apart. In we we had to take our first furlough in January of twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. That's right. So um, just there. There's catch up for everyone. There you go. Veronica's the going for a girl, and we were supposed to talk more than this, but life gets in the way, and that's okay. We're checking in. We、again. emailed a lot. We did <laughs> email a lot that no one else got to share. <laughs> I got、right. to find out what was happening, but、right. um. Um, I want to talk about your decision to take on the part-time design work that you did, and how, why you decided you wanted to do that, and how you got through to being okay with it instead of viewing it as, you know, a fail or something. Because it totally isn't,、right. but I know how you have to get there. Yeah, and、okay. that was, and that was the thing. That was a, that was there was a lot of internal dialogue there.、Um, <clears throat> okay, so、um, like I said, at, when we were talking about Pod earlier, Pod tanked in, in the middle of the year.、Um, it, it just f- sort of, yeah, it, it was it was me kind of changing directions and and not being a good steward to it.、Um, and I was kind of worried at that point about what you know where I was going to be able to because I was I. Was very close to the edge. If you go back and like listen to the to the original podcast that we did together, I was really like I didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room. No,、um, I was no, I, I was relying on Pod pretty heavily,、um, and if anything went wrong, that was going to be a problem.、Right. Fortunately, the ID the IT department was a contractor for my old job, and we stayed in touch. They knew what I was doing and that I was going to be doing like design and illustration and that sort of thing. And they were like, "Well, can you do our website?" Um, sure. Yeah, I can do your website. That'd be great. So I was a contractor for them for a while,、um, and as、uh, my income was starting to destabilize, and and you know, I started thinking to myself, "Oh shit, what am I going to do?"、Um, their bookkeeper was like, "Yeah, if you want to do any more work with her, you're going to have to hire her." So, <laughs>、um, th- that's how that happened.、Um, I had kind of. At a certain point, gone. Man, it would be really nice if I could find some sort of part-time job where it was like ten hours a week, and like you know a decent amount of money where I could cover my bases, and then I could just have the whole rest of my time be,、uh, you know, be dedicated to making my work. But who's going to agree to those terms? And then like they、Perfect. turned around and they were like, "Hey, can you do ten hours a week at like this much?" And I was like, "Yes." So th- you know, it, it fell into place really quickly and really. Well, and it was very gratifying to to have someone go, yeah, yeah. You want these terms here? Let let me give you these terms.、Um, but it felt weird. It felt like a step back.、Um, and and Brad and I talked about it, and and even he was kind of worried for me.、Um, bless his heart for being like, well, if you take this part time job, it's going to make you less hungry. Like you're gonna you're gonna want. Like I'm worried that you're gonna feel too complacent about、uh-huh. it and stop. So、nice. yeah, yeah. So supportive of the of the creative fire, not right, wanting、yeah. to see it be be put out by yeah, yeah by salary or, but like okay, I I need to bring this up and bring bring my attention to it because you、yeah. made a good point. Like you needed, like you were not going to be able to do anything different but what you were doing if you didn't have wiggle room. There was no experiment room for experimentation.、Right. There was、and、no was... room to to build anything else. And, and that was one. Sorry, we're and we're and that and that and that. Go ahead because we're we're getting to the same place. That was the reason this turned out to be a net positive for me.、Right. Was was that now suddenly my bases are covered. I get a weekly paycheck now, and I my bills are paid on that alone. I could sleep the whole rest of the time, but I'm not gonna. Um, so now is now it's like the, the resin is suddenly completely justified.、Right. Like painting is suddenly completely justified. Like I can do so much more now than like there was a lot of panic at the beginning of the year. I was really、right. like 
um, sort of hyper focused on making sure that whatever I was doing was going to, you know, was going to net me some money. Right. And now I don't have to worry about that in quite the same way. So that's a thing. Um, and, but I was still feeling weird about it. Like I was still feeling really weird about, um, like, well, okay, I took a job, you know, like I've, I got a job, you know, yeah. like that was sort of, I, I always sort of imagined this conversation between us because I knew that we were going to eventually follow up. And I was like, oh, what am I going to tell Leslie? I was the going for it girl and now I got a job. <laughs> um, but, but that, but you're the going for it girl and you got yeah. a, you got a job. Great. Okay. Expl- right. like, explain it. Cause it's, it's part of the whole process. Right? Yeah. So like it's part of the process. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, and I needed one, like I, I needed to have that stability and thinking about it, we talked a lot about sort of um, self dialogue and how that works and what um, the method by which the, the method by which I've been doing that for years has been, I write in a little journal and I talk to a cartoon owl um, and it's, so there's that like I write comics me talking like me worrying about stuff and then the little cartoon owl is like the part of me that 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 loves myself and wants me to do well and and so it's always like kind of writing encouraging things and that sort of thing I love it. so um have you have you read my 24-hour comic I should just send you a Which... pdf rather than I've only done one it was from back in 2009 that was when this started when I started dialoguing with this owl um Send, send me a link anyway, just because I think I read it, but I'm I yeah. don't remember. I, I don't read know. A I try think... twenty four hour comics. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so anyway, so there's that. But the way that that you suggested that I do it, um, like before we started talking about, like, oh yeah, I do that already with a cartoon yeah. is You you wanted me to go and um, talk to someone that I admire. Um, from the past, someone probably who has died because it's sort of easier to like access that as a meditation. So I ended up with, with this round table of childhood heroes that included William Hartnell, who was the first doctor, and my dad, and then Jim Henson, who came to the table last. Um, oh, and yeah, like Jim Henson sort of became the one that stuck, I think, because his his aesthetic is similar to mine. Like, right, right. looks like it's for kids, but it's not always for kids. Right. Um, like well, the Muppet Show was not really for kids, no. and like all of the Wilkins coffee advertisements, where like people are getting blown up with cannons, wasn't there. anyway. Um, point being, um, that that became a thing, and so like I had this, I had this kind of ongoing dialogue, like mostly when I'm in the car, I would kind of you know when I'm like I ruminating do that a lot and stuff. Too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the car really so, works. The car works works really well. So I'm at a stoplight and I'm thinking about like, oh man, I got this job. Like I kind of feel like I like I'm um, copping out. I guess would be the the way. And then like this was like maybe the week after um, John Henson, his son, passed away. And so I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about like like that. Um, how how I don't know I was just I was just thinking about the Hensons, and all of a sudden I remembered the Lachoy dragon. Um, so the Lachoy dragon is like back in the in the seventies color TV video. So like the seventies or the late sixties, um, Jim Henson used to make commercials. He used to make commercials with Muppets. Um, I mean they weren't Muppets back then, but they but they were Muppets. And so like Lachoy soy sauce or like Lachoy food <laughs> products of some kind, yeah. they had a mascot who was. A dragon. It was a gigantic Muppet, like suit Muppet, like Big Bird, and that that was. I, I I forget what the premise of the commercial is. Like they're walking down the supermarket aisle, and a big poof of smoke comes, and then there's the Lachoy dragon, and it was like a really complex puppet for the. You know, it was pre. Um, I'm just I'm looking Sesame it up Street. right now. He's, he's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So like that was the image that appeared before me when I started like you know, kind of checking in with my round table of childhood heroes about like whether or not making, you know, getting a job is the right thing. It's like, you know, it's in, it's, it's in my craft. Like I'm, I'm doing design and illustration work. Like that's, I'm, I'm basically building websites for people. Um, but you know, it's keeping my design chops up. It's keeping me accountable to a schedule 
because I've got to now fit, you know, those 10 hours in my days somehow, um, which makes like all of the other time kind of, you know, all that much more precious because yeah. now, oh, well, I got to give 10 hours. I don't know. This sounds poor me. I got to give 10 hours to somebody else. Um <laughs> no, it's totally like it's totally legit cuz you could fuck away your whole day when it's mm-hmm. all your own time, you right. know, and mash your art in between 9 and midnight before you go to bed just to feel like you've done something in that day. Yeah. Do you know what I and mean? There, so And there were days. I mean, like, okay, so I made I, I started 105 um before the end of the year. I started 105 pieces of art. That means that there were nice. two two out of 3 days where I didn't finish something. So like that, I mean, that's what that number means to me. That's the other reason I'm like, well, 91. Um, <laughs> so just, we're so, we su- artists <laughs> suck. Like it can't be like, woo, 91. You're like, oh, well, I didn't make the 105. Right. I yeah, I know. It. Oh, but, <laughs> 91. But, my, <laughs> but my point is that there were days where I didn't do anything. You know, there were days where like even still when I didn't pick up a pencil because I was working on tagging or promotion or whatever else I was doing. And now it's like, well, I got to give at least, you know, I got to give at least two hours to to the IT guys. And, and what am I going to do with my other 10, you know, right. or, you know, 10 hours of waking time or whatever. So and that's where the monsters started. So because like that's the thing It's like now the monsters I'm doing all these monsters. I'm going to have 100 by April. Like, I that's am. Awesome. That's just going to happen. So that's cool. Um, like, I don't know. That's... No, that's totally cool. That whole idea of having a, a connected series of, of work, too, is just so much more powerful than, like, one-offs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it's helping me work on kind of some chops that have been languishing for the last like 10 years or whatever. So that's cool. And it's also like, you know, it's, it's like my daily practice. It's like the first thing that I do in, in the morning. Right. So like I have this job, right. I have this job now, but like, it's not first, it's not the first thing I give my energy to in the morning. Like I, I eat a breakfast, I paint a monster. So like, that's (laughs) like, that's awesome. Well, I love, I love how that, how it was just, it's, it's, it's just foundation. It's taking care of business. It's doing what you need to do so that you can put um, your best energies towards growing the business. Because you wouldn't be able to do that if every, you know, minute you're creating more for POD to feed, to feed that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There was no oh, yeah. room. There was no wiggle room. Right. And that was I didn't consider that at all until you brought it up. Yeah, and I mean it was something I was worried about because. Like the the cycle with print on demand, of course, is that like when you get to the holidays, that's like everything's gangbusters and and it's very exciting. It's a great time, and by the time the holidays are over, you feel really good about it, and you're like, yes, I'm gonna make this even better next year. And so like first quarter is high is like wildly productive. I'm speaking in the second person, but I'm really talking about myself. This is how I work. <laughs> um, yeah, so first quarter is always wildly productive for me for print on demand. And then like it sort of tapers off as the year goes on because I get sick of it because it, like it's kind of exhausting because like it's not just make an art and put it up. It's make an art and then do all of the SEO, like do all the, you know, put it up and tag it and promote it and make sure someone can see it and blog about it. and blah. It's, you know, it's all the not fun stuff. That's the marketing uh, stuff. Yeah, and I mean, it's got to be done, but, like, if you're doing that because, you know, like, this is my income now, and it's not very much, and if it falls below a certain number, I'm fucked. Like, that, that's not fun at all. No. So. No, no, no. That's, and there's no room to grow. There's no room to enlarge the pie. Right. It's a small piece of pie. Right. And and then also, like, in addition to all of that, like, in, in addition to, like, dealing with that particular working method, um, it's just naturally going to fall off in the middle of the year yeah. because because the holidays are gangbusters and then the summer is terrible. It always is. So I was good at the beginning of the year and I knew that I was going to be not so good toward the middle. I didn't realize how bad it was going right. to get, but that I also didn't realize that I was going to like ignore it in favor of other fun, shiny things. Um, I gave myself a lot of latitude this year. Like I, I played a lot. Well, good. I mean, it it worked out, and lucky me. Like, thank God it worked out. But like, it was um, yeah. Like, I I 
could have I could have been a better stu- steward to that particular income stream. So, but you know, I don't know. I don't think any of it's wasted. You could have, should have, would have. Stop. Mm. You know, don't shit on yourself. That's. <laughs> It's not, um, it, it's, are you, are you better, uh, situated now to understand the cycle of a year or is that still up for grabs for you to kind of get into a flow of a cycle of a year and kind of where you should be putting your energies for development and production and do you know what I mean? Cause you're, yeah. you're, you're production manager too. So, right. I mean, if nothing changed, like if n- if nothing about like the events that I do and the, and the the stuff that I'm involved in changes this year, I could probably work it out pretty well. But I have no intention to do the same stuff this year. I mean, right. to do to do just that stuff. Like now that I know, like now I'm like, ooh, well, well, I could do, I could do so much more. You know, like that's that's, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Like every everything is like, well, you know, last year went okay, but like. Now I know, you know, now I know what, what all's out there. And like, I've joined a lot of things sort of late in the year. Like I kind of started doing stuff kind of, you know, late, like I started doing resin in September. Um, so that was a thing. Like I started doing resin in September and then I found out that like, you know, that's a whole scene that I'm just now, you know, I've started yeah. making friends uh, who are also kind of like in the same place as I am, like new, new to the scene and stuff. Nice. But like, it's a scene. There's a con, you know, there's more than one. So that's something that I'm thinking about. I don't know if I'm going to be ready this year, but like, you know, that's going to be part of it at some point. Um, there are other, there are other cons that I maybe want to do thing, you know, like I just missed Sherlock Seattle because I wasn't going to, I didn't have the wherewithal to kind of get up there. Cons are expensive. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot of, um, like uh, Jenny Breeden from Devil's Panties was all like her whole thing for her to make a profit, even though mm-hmm. she has like thirty thousand hits on her site a day to mm-hmm. make a profit. It's couch surfing, you know, yeah. not going out for food, buying food, bringing it to the con, like total, yeah. total low. Yeah, like. And that's, I think that's probably the way that I'm going to have to do it going forward because, yeah. because I live far away from where the cons are. Um, everything is a travel con for me. Yeah. Like there's nothing, there are 28,000 people where I live. So, yeah. you know, um, that's just kind of going to be the the way it is. And I mean, it worked out. Like I, I didn't, um, I, uh, I made a profit, uh, at, at uh, Bay Area Sherlock Con, but it was like thirteen dollars after all of the stuff that I, you know, kind of did to get there, um, the did travel you, and the hotel and all of that stuff. So, did you buy any things with I your didn't. monies? Oh, you didn't. This was no. my problem at most of the cons. <laughs> I would walk away with like I never made a profit on anything in the states because uh-huh. I ended up flying, which is immediately like. Right. You know, I'm not PVP online or anything, you know, I'm not making that kind yeah. of cash at the conventions. Yeah. Um, but even the ones in Toronto, I would be like, woohoo, profit. Okay, let me go spend half of it, though, on those comics that I saw on the art and earrings. And I got, you know, mm-hmm. I got Doctor Who earrings and I got, yeah. you know, Transformer we- earrings. I traded with my neighbors so like I got stuff like we got you know but um I would and I would have made more I think if like a bunch of we you know we we went out to dinner and I and I stayed at the at the hotel where the con was I mean I shared a room with three people but like there were expenses that I probably could have I probably you know I could have made more if I had if I had done a number of things differently but Yeah. yeah you know it was my first one and the people were amazing like people were so cool and like I made friends and that, you know, it was, it was a wonderful experience. And it was like, I'm so glad I got to do that. You know, like I'm, I am theoretically unemployed. It's August and I, you know, whatever, like, and I got to go to, I got to go to Berkeley and have a weekend with a bunch of wonderful nerds <laughs> who were, you know, like that was great. Do so you really consider yourself technically unemployed. At the time, um, when people were asking what I was what I was up to, because people had like you know my my friends 
who I had, you know, who I knew through Tumblr or whatever, they, they knew what was up. They knew that I had, you know, that my job had evaporated and that this was what I was doing. And so I was describing it as sort of technically unemployed, but I was really like, you know, somebody asked, they're like, so what are you doing now? And I'm like, you're this, looking at it. Yeah. This is this. it. Yeah. Good. So, okay. Good. Okay. I need to just stop right now. Is there a snoring dog in the room? <laughs> 